Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey peeps, today we're going to take a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Unfair, and it's from Good Games Publishing. Now, if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page. The campaign is going on right now. You have just over a week left. You can follow the link up in the top corner of your screen, as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Those links will take you to the page. You don't have to take my word for it. You can find out for yourself and hopefully consider backing the project. Now Unfair is a competitive game where you and the other players are trying to build a magnificent theme park with all the attractions and uh, friendly hopefully staff and um, luxury upgrades, all these different types of things. There's different themes you can put on the parks, vampires, robots, jungle themes, animal attractions, things like that. Of course that's easier said than done because any theme park has a lot of different things that you have to worry about and it gets more difficult the further you get into it. So maybe you need to take a loan. Sometimes you have to deal with really bad things happening like government intervention or uh, the public getting outraged about something. But you need to deal with all of this in order to make the best park possible and get ahead of your competitors. Let me give you a brief look at how the game is played with a prototype version of the game but it looks pretty close to probably what the the uh, final version is going to look like, but just keep in mind that it's a prototype. Then we're going to come back, I'll let you know my final thoughts. Unfair is a competitive game for two to four players. The game lasts for eight rounds and your goal is to make a fantastic theme park and have the most points at the end. You get points in a bevy of ways, building large attractions, completing blueprints, hiring staff, and just having cash laying around. Before the game, you decide which theme park packs to play with, one per player, like vampires, robots, pirates, and the jungle. The cards from each pack will be shuffled into their respective decks with the cards from the other packs. Every player gets a cheat sheet and 20 coins. They also get a main gate card, which gives you your first star, reminds you of how many attractions you can have and what your capacity is, and a loan card, which starts face down. If you need coins during the game, you can flip the card face up and then turn it up to three more times to take coins each time and also increase the amount of points you'll have to pay at the end in order to fulfill the loan. You may decide before the game begins to play with one or more game changers, which modifies the setup and what you can do during the game, but these are purely optional. Everyone also starts with five random cards from the park deck. In that deck are several types of cards, each of which can be built by spending money. There are attractions, upgrades, staff members, and resources. Staff and attractions are placed on either side of your main gate, and attractions can't be moved once built. Six more of these cards will be flipped up onto the board. You may also build one of your showcase cards, but only once you've reached a star rating of 5. Blueprint cards are like achievements you're trying to meet to get extra points, but beware because any uncompleted blueprints will hit you for negative points at the end. Event cards have two parts to them, and you decide which one to use. The top part of an event usually takes effect right away, while the bottom part is usually more circumstantial and for later use. Finally for the cards, you'll have to construct the city deck. City cards are special events that affect all players, and also serve as a timer for the game. You'll take four random Funfair cards and put them on top of four random Unfair cards. The Funfair cards are positive effects, and the Unfair cards are negative. Sandwiched in between them is the Public Notice card, to remind you that the fourth round will be the last round that you can take blueprints. Each round of the game is split into four steps. First is the Event Step. Each player draws an event card from the deck, and then the next city event is revealed that will affect everyone. Resolve that, and then each player will take turns playing an event card or passing. You can pass if you want and jump back in later, but if everyone passes in a row, then this phase will end. Second is the park step, where players take three actions, one at a time, in clockwise turn order. You have four options for your actions. You may draw. There's several ways to do this. You can just take a face-up card from the market and replace it. You can draw two cards from either the park deck, event deck, or blueprint deck, keep one, and discard one. Or you can discard a card from your hand to draw five cards from the park deck, but still only keep one. The second type of action is building, either attractions, upgrades, or staff from your hand. You can have a total of five attractions, including your super attractions, and you can't put the same upgrade on the same attraction. 
Simply pay the price and place it next to your main gate. The third action you can do is demolishing. You can discard any card from your display, one per action, but if you destroy an attraction, every upgrade gets destroyed along with it. Finally, you may take Loose Change, which nets you one coin per attraction that you've built. Once all players have taken all three actions, and possibly a fourth due to special cards, it's time for the third step of the round, which is Guests. Add up all stars from all the stuff that you've built, and that's your income for the round. You're limited to 15 guests, however, unless you have special cards, although you're free to build as many stars as you want. Next is the cleanup phase, where you clean out and refill the market, discard down to 5 park and event cards, and move the starting player to the next person. After the 8th round, you do final scoring. Every attraction and its upgrades have icons on ribbons. Count up all these icons and consult a chart in the book or on your player aid to determine how many points you get. Then reveal your blueprints and either earn the points if you were successful in building them or take negative 10 points for failing to do so for each one. You'll also get hit if you took out loans during the game. Finally, count your coins and give yourself one point for every two coins. Whoever ends up with the most points is the winner. Well, I think it goes without saying that the number one attraction, no pun intended, to Unfair is its theme. Because while I have seen and have played a few games with amusement park themes in the past, there aren't a lot of them. And there especially aren't a lot that aren't like very, very light. Now, Unfair is not very, very heavy. It's not on the opposite end of that spectrum. But it is somewhere in between because it is a strategic game. You need to be thinking strategically. You need to be have a forward planning, critical thinking, all these different types of things. But at the same time, it's not an uber long game. It's not uberly complicated. If I keep saying uber, and I'll probably get paid by uber. But, um, and it's very easy to teach. So you're not going to get overwhelmed by the game, but it still has a lot of decision making involved. So I think because of that, and when you tie together the theme to the uh, very high quality artwork in the game, and um, the really uh, thematic aspects of the game, and all the different things that you have to worry about that, yeah, someone who's actually running a theme park would have to worry about, when you put all these things together, it sets it far, far apart from any other game that even remotely shares the amusement park type theme. It's just a different type of animal. So it has these Euro game elements, these economical elements, uh, but together with uh, you know a fun theme, which really helps a lot. And there are a lot of interesting mechanical aspects to the game as well. The whole idea of you know building up your park, upgrading it, um, trying to get uh, uh, your capacity up in order to bring in as much income as possible, but you have an upper limit to that capacity. The, again, lots and lots of decision making in the game. There's interesting ways in which you can modify the game, the game changing cards. Um, you have to worry about building your super attraction, but that may not be all cracked up for you. Might be going for other things in the game instead. Um, creative usage of the event cards, but especially um, the uh, personal event cards, which have the two different options. This is, an, again, an example of do you go for the forward planning or do you use it right away and get an immediate benefit, which might not be as good had you waited and used it at a later point, especially the defensive type cards that prevent something really bad from happening to you. And that's another interesting aspect are the communal event cards, the ones that start off good but eventually become very bad. That also goes... Um, to my point of the blueprint cards, which eventually become unavailable when you get to those bad cards, but up until the point where you have uh, access to the blueprints, those are just another way for you to score points, but they're a risky way for you to score points. So if you decide to take those and you can't actually end up completing them, you're going to be in a world of hurt, but they could mean buku points for you should you choose to risk taking them and hopefully uh, completing them. So lots of different things going on in the game, lots of ways for you to score points, um, but ultimately what it comes down to is building the biggest, best theme park possible. Um, like I said, the theme is strong here, all the different types of things that you can do, the different theme packs that you can add, which I'm sure as part of the Kickstarter and in the future, they'll have even more of to add in, which is just more variety, both mechanically and thematically. So if you're someone who is inclined to like a, a strategic Euro game that's not too, too heavy, but definitely not light fair either, but I just keep using all kinds of puns, fair, but, <laughs> but uh, you also want a good theme and you want something that doesn't feel totally dry and it's not uh, too complex to teach, but it's still 
um, has enough meat on its bones for uh, your gamerly gamer friends, you definitely want to consider Unfair because it's a very unique game and unlike a lot of other games that are in either the Euro game genre or the amusement park themed game genre. So you can go to the official Kickstarter project page, the campaign is running right now, follow the link in the top corner of your screen as well as down in the description section underneath this video. Those links will take you to the page, find out more, hopefully you'll consider backing the project. That is Unfair from Good Games Publishing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting our sponsors. Take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.